everyone who's listening to my podcast. Scott, he's Scotty's taking in charge, even though he's like ninety ninety percent of the information that comes across. <laughs> How's things, mate? Life's good. Life's pretty good. You know, I'd uh, I'd feel happier if uh, uh, Naren uh, from Pro Medical out there was actually a decent fellow and returned fifty five thousand dollars for me. Just big shout out. Don't do business with Pro Medical or Cryo Australia. These guys will take your money. Great advertising, Naran. You, you should feel good about that. Naran De Silva, you know, not a great character. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does turn out that people listen to this because uh, I had a few <laughs> people come up to me over the weekend saying, you know, when are you doing your next podcast? I'm like, oh, shit. Ah, there you go. Amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, there we go, mate. Yeah, that's in good. very, very, very small circles. People know of us. That's that's yeah. nice. That's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, mate, you said you wanted to, uh, we're going to talk about um, endocrine disruptors. Endocrine disruptors, absolutely. My favorite um, subject of this week is phthalates, um, which I posted about a bit earlier on. And I have this wonderful book that I want uh, everyone to, to know about called Our Stolen Future. And there's another one that goes with it called Uh, hormonal chaos and it was the first book that kind of set me going maybe I don't know 15 odd years ago on the fact that what we're doing to ourselves is probably not as clever as we think Uh, and (laughs) you know some of the conveniences that we have in life including plastics and um, you know the lining in our our uh, soft drink cans might actually be screwing us up into the future and so what I was posting about earlier this week uh, was about a chemical called a phthalate. And phthalates are found as a softener uh, or a plasticizer is their correct term in uh, plastics mm. that we see quite commonly. And they're there to keep the, the plastic nice and flexible so it doesn't become brittle. And this is why it's on the lining gotcha. inside of soft drink cans or, or tinned food. Now, these things leach into the food when the, the food gets hot. Uh, or, wait, or wait, wait, wait. Hot. Why are they putting plasticizers on like tins instead of, isn't it? So it's not just plastic, it's in well, all it, containers it's, to stop it from being brittle? Yeah, basically. So it, it depends. Mm. Some, some plastics are specific food grade and the phthalates aren't there. And we're now seeing that they're mm. BPA free. But BPA free is a bit of a misnomer because there's, uh, BPBs and, and other uh, bisphenol uh, compounds that aren't just bisphenol A uh, that mm. also are known endocrine disruptors that are shown to increase weight gain, uh, decrease thyroid function, increase cancer growth in susceptible people, cause non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in susceptible people. Now, I want to point out as mm. a, um, you know, one of those disclaimers for people. If you've got absolutely brilliant detox genetics and you're in fine form, these things might not trouble you. And this is part of our problem is mm-hmm. that we've used this long-term concept called uh, the LD50. You know, you get 100 rats, you feed them full of whatever the toxin is and whatever the amount, they mm-hmm. get 50 of them pretty quickly within this time period is pretty much what we consider the toxic load and we want to keep away from that. But as I've said before, mm-hmm. thalidomide, didn't affect rats whatsoever. So we handed that out to to mothers and their kids came out with no arms and legs. They were kind of very Mm. unfortunate um, growth uh, deformities coming from that. So we can't really trust LD50 because what will poison humans may take 20 years, may take 50 years. And now we know that like... Mm. Mm say for cancer, it's got about a 10-year latency period, some of the chemicals that are spoken about in in things like this book are particularly Mm. hazardous for us. Now, what was spoken about, the big thing in Our Stolen Future, was it was the first information about a big chemical spill, a petrochemical spill in the Florida Everglades. And Mm. what came of it is that the uh, the bird life and the alligators in the area started to behave very strangely and their, their offspring numbers declined mm. dramatically. Now, what was shown from the petrochemicals is that the, the male 
birds weren't interested in mating with the females and the female birds were only interested in pair bonding with other females. And the shells of both the alligators and the birds were very thin and the offspring weren't surviving because Mm. they weren't robust enough to actually make it through the time period. Now, it gets worse. Those petrochemicals Mm. were shown to cause a decrease in sperm count by at least 30% and a decrease in penis size in the alligators in the offspring by about 30%. So the Jesus. chemicals were causing... All right, we've got to get that shit out yeah. of our diet. So, so if you want to take <laughs> it to a really interesting point, you know, you see the 70s porn, you know, that good quality stuff, and this is, of course, <laughs> a, uh, an adult uh, <laughs> warning label on the podcast, <laughs> but everyone was supposedly like, you know, 12 foot long, and this is not the case in, in modern days. Things... You know, oh, we're not so worried about size. It's what you can do. Well, it may actually be that penis size has actually got significantly smaller Regression. in the population across the last 40 years. Because guess what the number one xenoestrogen or estrogen endocrine disruptor that's going into human beings is these days? It's really obvious. Well, <laughs> Off, off the uh, the topic of conversation, I'm guessing it's plastics and, and phosphate. Uh, what is it? Phthalates. Phthalates, it's not. Oh, <laughs> ah, you let me down a uh, cheeky son of a bitch. What's the answer then? <laughs> Contraceptive medication in the Western world. Ah. Oh, okay, so there's some really interesting things that occur in, in fetal development and uh, chemical exposure at certain phases of the, the uh, fetus development. And so... Mm. Uh, get inappropriate levels of certain compounds like estrogens at certain moments in the um, the fetal development, you alter the brain structure in the offspring. Mm. If you have, yeah, that's scary as shit. Yeah, yeah, oh, we're seeing we're seeing the change. All this excess estrogen. What what does estrogen do in the body? One of the things it does is it causes feminization and it causes the increased deposition of fat and fat cells. Now, what we've been hearing recently is it's that your kid is sitting in the t- front of the TV at four years of old too much. That's why your kid is fat, right? As against, hmm. perhaps this is a, uh, a change of the estrogen sensitivity in the system and the smaller amounts of food that are high mm. insulin bearing foods, so the amount of carbohydrates mm. is actually creating a much more insulin resistant estrogenic system. And the children are putting on lots more weight and feminizing their system, and they've got lower muscle mm. development at the same time. It's an interesting thought. Can I prove yeah, it at this moment? Interesting. Not so easy because no one wants to look at this because convenience trumps outcome of our species gotcha yeah and then we have the phthalates. so the phthalates okay. themselves getting back to our original point i've shown mm. that prenatal exposure in the mum will cause a slowing of her thyroid metabolism and an increased risk of adhd in her offspring boom yeah jesus that's, that's a big one that's a good one and it's been that is a big one wow and do you think it's getting any so, problems? Well, Ah, oh, probably. Yeah, God no. Uh, it's all, all BPAs as as good as he gets, but uh, maybe you can lead the wave for the the next round of. Uh, mate, if you can prove that that uh, phthalates and contraceptives are decreasing penis size by thirty percent, I can almost guarantee that uh, it's going to get some media coverage. Well, um, but you know, uh, get coverage. Oh, I had a question. The the woman, like again, as I talk about convenience, they've been sold this message that. Uh, regulating a cycle and and the effectiveness of it are the most convenient mm. thing that you've got to be worried about. Now, my argument is, well, the outcome of your offspring is probably what you've got to be worried about because there are other forms of contraception. Now, I appreciate that other people out there are going to not like that particular statement and they're going to say, oh, well, what would you know? You're, you're a male. It, got it. Absolutely. I don't get rights, choices or otherwise. However, I think when you're making an informed decision about what's going into your system, you might want to think mm. about what some of those outcomes are. Again, let's think on this. While men's penis size has got smaller, women's breast size in the last 40 years has got bigger. The average breast size has gone in Australia from a B cup to a D cup. Now, bluntly put, 
breasts are bags of fat. Mm. Mm. Okay? So what this says is that the laying down of fat, on average, is increasing cup size in people in Australia at this moment in time. And this may not actually be that good a thing. That may actually be a sign of ill health. We've also noted, magically, mm. that uh, breast cancer used to be, 40 years ago, a problem of postmenopausal women, average age around 60, and now it's affecting mm. women in their 30s and younger. And instead of it being really rare to be uh, estrogen receptor positive, it's now really common, and it's really common to be both progesterone receptor positive and estrogen receptor positive. Now, this can't be just purely evolutionary change. It's occurred in 40 years. Something mm. we are doing is Pretty likely having an effect and mm. it's chronic exposure. Now, what gets me kind of really hot under the collar is you hear these people out there in the world of uneducatedness talking about, well, you know, Japan's got this great health and China had this great health. And look, the China study says it's the meat that's the bad guy. Well, it was mm. illegal to sell women any form of hormonal medications in Japan up until about the mid-90s. Mm. Now, think of how that would skew your research if you're comparing Japanese women's health mm. to Western women's health who've had, like, by that stage, 20-odd years and several mm. generations of hormones. The women who have had all the trouble in their menopause are, generally speaking, the first generation of women since the 60s who were given very strong estrogen compounds for contraceptive medication back around 1966. Maybe there's a link there. Now, logic says it probably yeah, is. Shit. But yeah. do you think we're going to test that? No, no, no. We wouldn't want to figure no, out what's no, going no, wrong and change it. No fun in proof. Um, <laughs> what? Because if we're looking at, um, uh, so if we, it, it all comes down to the genetic susceptibility, and some people are going to be okay with the exposure to um, uh, phthalates. How do I say yep. it again? Phthalates. Phthalates. So some people are going to um, uh, same as you know tolerating gluten. Some people are going to tolerate it, but some people aren't. What would be the? Um, how would you know if you tolerate phthalates or not? Like, what would be your sort of um, body type, size, symptoms, or anything like that that you would say you're, you're not a phthalate? Uh, holder um well i'm not sure there is one i think everyone is actually poisoned to some lesser or greater degree by them mm. however um the obvious signs would be that you still maintain your body mass easily you maintain a lean muscle mass that would be in you know the top five percent of the population your energy is up your don't suffer with brain fog, memory is really crisp, et cetera. Um, mm. We're not drying out. So issues with thyroid can show up with really dry, crackly skin that looks like snake skin, uh, mm. alterations in eyes, again, uh, loss of memory. And again, these are the signs and symptoms of thyroid dysfunction. So mm. people just go, oh, well, look, you've got a thyroid disorder. Now, there's an entire population because we've spoken about these people uh, previously when we were doing a, uh, a podcast on thyroid. And we've got these mm. people out there who have all the thyroid signs, but they've got this subclinical thyroiditis. So mm. they know that their metabolism is not running well, but their absolute numbers you know, mm, are within just, the safe range. Just within the safe range. They're dying. They're like, oh, can't you do something? Mm. Well, these mm. are the possible reasons, phthalate exposure. So, of course, um, I've banned my family from, uh, you know, soft drink cans at all. Uh, mm. And I explained to them, I posted up a little while ago a, uh, a post on um, acid dipping a, uh, a soft drink can and uh, half, mm. half dipping it. And you could see the actual plastic bag left of the cola that was still in it. That was the inside lining of that soda can. That's kind of gross. Yeah, yeah. And so, again, I, I showed <clears throat> this to my kids and said, well, look, this is for real. You guys mm. need to not do this. This is what they do mm. to you. And so at this moment in time, everything's in glass. Uh, I've, I've gone and changed our water filtration systems at home to try and make sure that we're, we're keeping all of our water bottled in glass, mm. keeping it away from plastic as much as we possibly can. Because you told me through, because um, I've, I've seen on the interwebs things about like microplastics in the, um, in the water and they're almost like 
unavoidable, <clears throat> like turning up in like store samples and all that sort of thing as well. Absolutely. And, and they're going to be problematic for a variety of reasons. Again, microplastics, when they warm and the body temperature is possibly warm enough in a lot of those cases, they will start to mm. leak chemicals into you. And if those things are xenoestrogens that act as growth factors, if that's in your bowel wall, maybe mm. that, that micro irritant will act like a pearl and create like a polyp, or it could mm. create growth like factors and start setting off a metaplasia and, and a cancer. We just Pre- don't know. Precursors to yeah, bowel cancer. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, interesting. We don't know. Okay. And so one way or the other, what you've got to be doing is getting some degree of um, micron filtration going on uh, so that all your water actually gets put through several filter layers that as little mm. of it goes through you as it possibly can. Um, can you absolutely prove that you can stop it? And the answer is no. But if you're mm. doing nothing, well, then you're not stopping anything at all. <laughs> mm. um, so let's let's say uh, um, you know you, you people. Uh, I'm assuming listening to this aren't uh, you know um, pre-birth. They've been on the earth for a good long while to be able to listen to this podcast. Sure. So guaranteed that people have been exposed to plastics and and soft drinks and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so and I'm aware of you know chelation to get rid of heavy metals out of your body. Um, are there any effective ways of getting microplastics out of their body? Well. Uh, Again, we kind of go back to the the more normal methods at that moment in time. Chelation doesn't really work in these um, these compounds because these compounds are, are really small. So heavy metals have mm. a really big size and can be picked up quite easily by our very gross, large uh, molecules. Uh, mm. The plastics aren't done that way, and they act in in some ways a lot like your own estrogenic compounds and so you have mm. to be driving things like your detoxification your metallothionines and your uh compt enzymes that help break down these things and glucuronidation pathways so we need to look at running some epigenetics and we look at running what your bowel core and bacteria mm. look like and what the colony is doing because they help you detoxify we look at giving you mm kind of methylation cofactors and we give you glucuronidation cofactors and there are certain herbs that will help with this. And again, a lot of it's preventative. If you don't get these things Mm. into you, over a period of time, your body will slowly excrete a lot of these things and Mm. hopefully we'll find that they won't cause you any trouble. At this moment, the the jury's out on on how much you can actually do other things that i Mm. look at includes sweating i recommend saunering we recommend uh things like the cryotherapy we recommend things like hyperbaric because all of them are shown to drive certain Mm. genes that drive down inflammation and activate your immune system to put you into a healing phase and generate new stem cells because if we can't necessarily stop the thing irritating us if we drive mm. you into a state of healing to drive your robustness and get you ahead of the damage, it's our best mm. chance at actually solving the issue. But yeah, like the general consensus out there seems to be that um, like the fish are stuffed and we're pretty much fucked. Mm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and Too late. Well, to some degree, we've all got heavy metals yeah. in us. We've all got these microplastics and xenoestrogens in us and we just accept it as normal like these Mm. things are being found in the deep deep arctic and antarctic uh, areas in the animals so when they do Mm. kind of blubber punctures these xenoestrogenic compounds are actually being found in uh the insulation fat of the the walruses and and polar bears etc yeah, right. But, but don't worry. It's just the carbon. <coughs> I have a carbon tax and get everyone really excited about a money go round. <laughs> like it just uh, frustrates me that when we're talking about pollution in our environment, all we're doing is going, let's set up a cap and trade system, not, hey, we might need to look at the fabric of our society and maybe stop being so kind of uh, narrow focused about it and actually get into the concept that what we're doing is actually not just destroying the the heat in the atmosphere, but it's actually just like I'm pretty confident because research I've come across says that we've got about 120 years reproductive capability left naturally. The fastest growing trends in medicine, the two fastest disciplines are oncology and reproductive health. Now think Mm. of it. Both of them are affected by xenoestrogens. Mm. cancer gets driven by too much estrogenic compounds in people and infertility Mm. is when your hormones are so out of balance you can't carry a child to term 
Yeah. Is this when you announced that you're going to run for prime minister in four years? Um, you know, lead, the, lead the change. So. I don't think so because um, uh, I'm still one of those people. I'd uh, with the the dual citizenship thing. I'd be up on that whole whatever section sort of thing it is. But I really want to get people thinking a bit oh, more big enough. picture about it. Great, yeah, you know, decrease carbon pollution, all, all for that. But let's get a bit more big picture. Stop thinking about let's make a taxable mm. money-go-round system. Let's actually start looking at pulling poisons out of our society. The glyphosates are shown to be damaging us. And, of course, we've got people out there who are naysayers. No, no glyphos- glyphosates are really, really, um, really safe. I've got a friend who completely disagrees with my, my stuff on it but glyphosate is mm. shown to cause all the same capacities in the human gut as celiac disease wasn't there something like a two billion dollar lawsuit against monsanto over the last yep. month or something for glyphosate yeah, yeah. yeah and they'll appeal it yeah, because yeah. they've still got a lot of money in the background and at some point yeah the floodgates are going to open and they're going to probably do uh, what james hardy did and go right right yep yep there's yeah, it's us. We'll set up a fund. We're going to move ourselves to a uh, low tax denominational thing, remove all the mm. money out of the fund and leave everyone with the debt. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm being too cynical, but, you know, like... Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. History shows that greed outweighs um, human kindness more than anything. Self-preservation outstrips. But what I want to give people the image of is you're sitting in one of those... Indian canoes, you know, the open top ones and there's kind of the plebs at one end and and the ultra wealthy leaders of of the corporate world at the other end and there's water coming in at one end. <laughs> the people sitting at the top end are not going to get away from it because this stuff is pervasive. It's everywhere. It's tainting our food supply. Mm. It's tainting our water supply. Now, think on, mm. on what we do with our sewerage, okay? So the women take the contraceptive pill and they swallow mm. it down and they metabolize it and they pee out all this excess hormonal chemicals and it goes into mm. the sewage. Now, the sewage mm. gets treated for its bacteria and then we have to get rid of the fluid. So what do we do with it? We release it into the water supply. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Super estrogenated uh, fluid back into, yeah. Don't, uh, don't, don't drink tap water. We okay, don't, like we we don't we don't uh, filter that stuff for these compounds. We only filter mm. it for very big, obvious, heavy chunks of garbage. So we are likely drinking that stuff. Can you run me through? Because um, the, the, there's the mechanism where um, white fat gets inflamed, and then that starts to increase estrogen and um, output. Versus the phthalate um, mechanism for increasing your, uh, your estrogen output. What is there? Is it the same thing? Inflammation causes all. Or? Inflammation does cause all, but um, the phthalate in itself can bind, uh, by the looks of things, to a receptor. Now, one of that is through the thyroid, and there's a link between. Uh, the thyroid slowing down and estrogen rising in the body, and too much estrogen will block the thyroid all by its own self. So mm, the that's a nasty body, cycle. Yeah, the body fat alone. So if we start getting insulin resistant and putting on weight in the mid body, those fat mm. cells will drive accumulation of more fat cells all by themselves because they release a xenoestrogenic or, or self-modulating estrogenic compound, which makes your system believe that there is more famine coming and therefore we need to keep laying down more fat. And so the inflammation mm, mm. drives insulin resistant, drives estrogen accumulation, and the cycle gets bigger. Now, part of that problem, I suspect, is because of the pre-exposure of the fetus to become highly sensitive to much smaller amounts of estrogen. So if you expose mm. the fetus to uh, inappropriate levels of chemical compared to what we were designed to be exposed to in those times, you know, say the first 12 weeks, the end outcome could be something that we really weren't expecting. But now what we do is we have to consider it normal and you're not allowed to body shame anyone. You're not allowed to say, hey, by the way, this might not be a normal kind of condition and being like 200 Mm. kilos might actually not be a good thing and we're not actually trying to body shame you we're trying to say hey this is a health crisis because the evidence fundamentally shows that the more morbidly obese you are for whatever the cause the more Mm. likely you are to die young have bad knees you know there's there's massive amounts of damage occurring at that moment in time but you, you know no psychologically it's damaging to actually say look you're a bit big no, that's not it. Hmm. Because 
inflammation from being a bit big is psychologically damaging because it's shown to damage the brain structure. So we actually need to be a bit more big picture about this and actually try and intervene in positive ways. Now, what gets really trippy is I saw a, um, a paper uh, that Russia is taking on the Japanese uh, style of weight management. And so if you're between mm. something like, uh, I think it's 45 and 60, and your waist circumference goes above a certain uh, range, which is like, I think, uh, 32 or 34 inches, you will start getting mm. fined until you bring your waist circumference down. And you have to... Achieve- Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. No, no. They are going hardcore at reducing mortality from obesity. Not us. We're like, yeah, right. oh, no, that guy said I was too fat. I'm going to complain to the medical board because because he fat checked. No, this is not mm. that situation. Mm. We need to be really, really aware that there are mm. big changes ahead of us because we've screwed ourselves up. And I suppose like, if there's a um, exposure during fetus that's increasing our sensitivity to estrogen, it's very hard to desensitize ourselves to estrogen when it's everywhere in the drinking water through to the phthalates, through to the... Hint, we have to get a bigger gotcha. picture. And therefore, these people may need to be on kind of uh, herbs or, or drugs for estrogen blocking. But there is one good piece of hope to be had in all of this. The evidence shows that if we alter the the mum's health in the two years and the dad's to some degree, but uh, the mm. evidence is much stronger on improving uh, female health in the two years prior to getting pregnant, we can epigenetically change the outcomes in those kids. So regardless of how uh, estrogenically messed up uh, someone might be, if you alter what's going on for them, change your diet, change supplementation, change nutrition, bring them back to as close to whatever homeostasis might be, the offspring's mm. genetics will get better. But you've got to work cool. at it. you got to work at it. What's what's the um, herbs uh, that are sort of estrogen blocking that you just mentioned? So things like black cohosh are, are shown to help the body, but they're on the same token, too much black cohosh in a susceptible person can cause liver enzymes to get out of hand and, and actually create yeah. oxidative damage. So we utilize things like more B12. We use uh, glucuronic acid, uh, which is usually bound to calcium. Uh, we look yeah. at altering the bowel bacteria because certain of the bacteria help us process uh, those mm. um, compounds, we utilize sulforaphane. Sulforaphane and curcumin are both shown to balance out um, the, the enzymes for detoxification, both phase one and phase two. Uh, there are compounds that include a whole bunch of zinc to upregulate chemicals like metallothionine that will help pull out heavy metals from the body. Uh, milk thistles, another one. There's a bunch of different things that'll help but you need to actually start looking at yourself and reduce your exposure because just because you're pulling them out, if you're not actually trying to actively stop stuff going in, you're probably not going to win. Yeah. If you're, you're adding 20 times more than you're excreting, then it's not a, uh, uh, a bit of an uphill battle. Well, I'm pretty confident that'll end in, in some degree of drama. And like, there's, mm-hmm. there's two major growth industries in medicine that are expected in the next 30 years. One is cancer still and the other mm-hmm. is dementia. And inappropriate hormonal signals are shown to be interrelated into dementia. Mm, Jesus. The gift that keeps on giving. Well, yeah, we need to look at it. Like there's a blunt message that I have for all the people out there. And again, I know no one's going to like it and I'll get vilified for it, but there is no such thing as a free lunch. And when we relate that to to sex and uh, sexual activity and and contraception, uh, Mm. there's what seems like a free lunch, you know, let's face it, mm. the, the concept of contraceptive medication taking care of all our problems, regulating hormonal cycles, sounds too good to be true. Well, the truth is it probably is. And mm. realistically, it's convenience and commerce that keep the stuff in our environment. It is mm. proven. Lack of awareness of the cost. Like if you look and read the package, the, the, the mm. thing in there, it'll tell you about the deep vein thrombosis and the cancer risks and all the other things. They know it. They advertise it. They tell you, but no one, no one looks at it because the GP says, here you go. It's perfectly fine. And we trust them. Mm. And just yeah, because yeah. we kind of go, oh, well, it's only one in 10,000. It's only one in 5,000. Well, think of how many people are taking this stuff. 
And again, that's looking at the short-term damage. Remember, this stuff has a 10-year latency in the system. So you keep taking it for 20 years, and then you've got 10 years to develop a problem. So you're sad as a 20-year-old. It's only going to be when you're about 40 to 50 that this stuff comes back to bite you in the ass. Mm. No one thinks that long-term. Yeah, peak breast cancer time frame, isn't it? Yeah. Well, actually, no, that's around 35 now. Yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. That was the age where my, um, my stepmother uh, kind of started really going down with that particular issue. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, not so good. All right. So the answer is people um, find out if you've got problems with estrogen, and you almost certainly do, and then <laughs> do what needs to be done to get rid of it. You've uh, got to look at it. You've got to look at your plastics in your environment. Do you really yeah. need that plastic um, soft, uh, the plastic you know, bottle to go to the gym with? Could you use a glass one? Could you use a stainless steel one? Can you make alterations mm. to lower the load that's going into you? Again, you know, aluminium chassis computer rather than the plastic chassis computer. Mm. Yes, it's going to cost you a little bit more, but these things get hot and they excrete plastics when you touch them. It goes through your skin. Mm. Yeah, shit's scary. Yeah. Well, there was a hard-hitting podcast for the week. I like it. I like it. Talking about the big picture stuff, I like it. (laughs) No, you, we never, well, I don't think we've ever talked about anything trivial, to be honest, mate. We're, so, uh, uh, it, yeah. uh, beautiful. All right. Well, for everyone listening, I hope you've enjoyed. If you've got any questions, sure as shit, don't ask me, ask Scotty. Yeah, uh, I'll take that one. <laughs> uh, mate, what's the best email address for you? Uh, the best uh, email contact for, uh, for me in practice is Tawong, T-O-O-W-O-N-G, at Optimal Life. Dot com dot au. Beautiful. And I'd like to thank everyone for listening into Brain and Body Health, Eric Hansen's <laughs> host podcast with <laughs> Scotty as the main uh, main <laughs> center uh, of the balance uh, of our happy life. Cognitive dissonance we must just, die. I wonder if we could we'll figure out how we can so it's optimal life and brain and body health. Optimal brain body life health yeah. Yeah. something i don't know we can we can figure it out cool. spitballing we'll figure it out <laughs> all right bye for now everyone have a beautiful day thank you for watching to learn more from dr scott visit our site at optihuman.com.au